Okay, we're good. So, like, like, uh, this this don't just have to be uh, me talking all the time. Right? This is a conversation. This is a conversation, like I normally do. I don't have to preach to y'all. So we just this conversation, you know. I'm, but I'm gonna I'm gonna talk a little bit about we. I've been talking about Yom Tour for the past two weeks, um, but today I'm gonna go a little bit different on the angle. So let's. So, actually, before I bring this up. I just want to remind everybody. So, Yom Teruah. Yom, of course, it means day in Hebrew. And Teruah is, it means shouting. So, this is why we can shout at all times. If you're just spontaneous, just, just go ahead and do it. <laughs> this is the day. This is the day do that. Well, it will be in a hour or so but this is we, we like to rehearse before we get to the church. it's just like when you go to a, a choir uh rehearsal or something and if you ain't been rehearsing before you get to the rehearsal everybody looking at you crazy because you ain't rehearsing so i don't mind if you rehearse a little bit just spontaneous break out just scream if you need to jump and dance do that too because this is where he actually wants to hear our voice Sometimes it's good to be quiet, but today is not one of those days. This is one of the days where he can blow the show far whenever he wants to, and I ain't gonna say nothing unless you get carried away. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's, that's good. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's good. That's an example. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's about this day. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry if y'all was talking. I had my volume down. I just turned it on. So if, if y'all want to talk online too, I didn't hear you. But Yom Teruah. So so we're gonna look at uh, Genesis one, verse fourteen. Uh, it says. And Elohim said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. So I'm just repeating what I've been talking about the last few weeks. Um, when Yah made the, the sun and he made the moon, he made them for signs. He made them for seasons. He made them for days. He made them for years. So this word seasons, that's the Moedim, that's the Moed, which is the appointed time. So the appointed time, appointed time, when you see this word seasons right here, that means when you, when you look outside and you see the sun, you see it rising up, and you see the sun setting, that's all for the purpose of us knowing when to meet with the Most High. That's, that's, it's, it's more than just light. It lights the earth so we can see what's around us. But more importantly, it's so that when he's going to meet with us, we know when to meet with him. Yeah. So that's, that's what the appointed time is. So, um, so as you can see, just like this table is spread, Today is one of these days. The table is spread. He's actually looking to see who's going to come and dine. Who's going to come and dine with him. And for many years, we have been missing his appointments. Many years, we have been uh, not even aware of what they were. I know I wasn't taught what the appointed times were. But uh, now I know. So I'm going I'm to get to every single one of them. I'm going to get to every single one of them. So... Yay! Yes, sir. Uh, there you go. That's good. That's good. Get it, get it. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> yep, keep rehearsing. So, so I'm, I'm gonna go through all of this. I, I, actually, I'm gonna stop right here for one second, just so that we know what are these next times that are coming. So right now, 
we're at Yom Teruah on the calendar that we're on at, at nine, around nine. Um, it's going to officially be the day of long. And but the next appointed time, two days from now, Yom Kippur, which is the Day of Atonement, which was the most important day in all of Israel when there was a temple, because it was the holiest day. It was the it was the holiest day where the holiest person on earth, which would be the high priest, would go into the holiest place on earth, which is the holy the holiest. So that day is really important. One day. So we know right now we know that Yahushua, he is the high priest now. He's in heaven, sitting as a high priest. And he actually didn't make it home for us. But there's going to be a national day of home one day for all of Israel. We're going to all be together. We're going to all be together. And Israel as a nation is going to be atoned for. It. So we're looking forward to that, to that fulfillment when he just washes and cleans everybody and then we can go on into the kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. So and then and then right after that, uh, hey, hey. There you go. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. That's what I told him. That's what I said to do. So two days from that, Yom Kippur, then you get to Sukkot, which is also called it means tabernacles, the Feast of Tabernacles. Yeah, all these feasts. All these feasts. And on this day, we are actually in exceedingly joyful. Joyful, joyful in Hebrew, it says the word twice. It's a day where you're supposed to be happy. No frowns, no getting on nobody's nerves, don't argue with nobody. It's the day, it's the, it's the, the point where we're actually Excited, we are happy, we would command you to be joyful. It's one thing to be joyful because we can be, but it's another thing when he tells you, I'm commanding you to be joyful. And it's a feast day. Yes. No burdens, no burdens. No burdens, that's right. No burdens. So, um, um, let me see, I'm going to. That's fine. So those are the these are the days that are coming up. We and on all of these days, they're called holy convocations. So the holy on the holy convocation, that's when we gather together, just like we are right now. We gather together. And why are we doing it? Because it's a dress rehearsal. It's a, it's uh it's a it's a rehearsal or something that's going to happen in the future. Why else are we doing it? Because he told us that's the main reason we do it. It don't matter if we understand or not. He said, keep this forever throughout all your generations. So that means even, even when you didn't forgot about the Torah, even when you didn't forgot the commandments, it's still something we're supposed to keep doing. Because this these days haven't even been fulfilled yet. Today, the day of trumpets, what we're going to talk about, it hasn't even happened yet. So why wouldn't we practice it? We want to keep it on the forefront of our mind because this day is going to be the most important day in history when it happens. The most important day. Ain't no other day. This day is mentioned more in the scriptures than any other day. This topic more talked about than any other topic. You can go all the way from Genesis to Revelation, and you're going to have Yom Teruah somehow in one of those books. It might not explicitly say Yom Teruah, but it's about this day, Yom Teruah, which represents the day of Yah. And you know, the day of Yah is all over the place. Yes. So that's why we got to dress, that's why we got to rehearse this day. Hey, hey, hey. There you hey, go. Hey. There you go. That we rehearsed this day hey, because, hey, hey. yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We rehearsed this day because he's going to remember us. We're going, we're going to look at these scriptures. We're going to look at these scriptures. But this is what they used to do. If we was in, if we was in uh, Jerusalem today, if we were all gathered together like we will be one day, it'd be something just like this. You had a priest. 
uh, gather around, and then you have Judah, you have Issachar, you have Zebulun, and then you might have uh, Nephtali, all gathered together, getting ready to shout, getting ready to blow the trumpet, getting ready to blow the shofar, and it will be loud and it will be beautiful. This, that's what this is all about. So, as I said, I, I actually didn't say this. So it's a holy convocation. In Hebrew, that means mikra. It's a kadosh mikra, a set apart gathering. So we can gather whenever we want to worship Yah, but today it's the set apart gathering. So it's the day where the set apart people gather. We're set apart. We're actually even, actually, let me go. I'm going to go to the scripture real quick. Let's show you. I saw this, I think, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and it tripped me out when I saw this. I actually shared it in the text message that I sent to everybody. Let me see. Okay, second Ezra 38. Okay, so we're going to, I'm going to second Ezra chapter 2. Verse 38. So y'all y'all know how the 144,000 are sealed in the book of Revelation. And because they are sealed, that means they're protected. So look at what 2 Ezra 2.38 says. It says, Arise up and stand. Behold the number of those that be sealed in the feast of Yahuwah. Behold the number of those that be sealed in the Moed, the appointed time of Yahuwah, which are departed from the shadow of the world and have received glorious garments of Yahuwah. Look at this. When I saw that, I said, okay, we're sealed in a number of ways. There's at least at least eight different ways in the scripture. We know we sealed by the Holy Spirit. We, we're sealed by it. at least eight. I could go you different eight different verses to show you how we are sealed. But when I saw this, I said, "Wow, I'm not missing this day for nothing. I ain't gonna miss no Shabbat. I ain't gonna miss no feast days. I ain't missing nothing because we are sealed when we do this. When we gather together." One day, the angel is going to actually come and he's going to seal his servants. He's going to look, he's going to see, are they doing this? Is he, are they at, are they gathered together? Are they at my holy set apart convocation? Are they living right? Are they, are they uh, being, being kind to the brothers and sisters? Do they have any unforgiveness? Do they have any This angel is going to look at each individual. I'm sorry, I got to admit people want to the The uh, angel is going to look at each individual and going to be able to see, are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? And this is part of it. So our seal, that means protected from what's about to happen in the earth, in the feast of the Lord. And then I like the second part too, which are departed from the shadow of the world. We're departing from the darkness from the evil, from the, from the iniquity, from what the world does. And then what he's going to do is he's going to clothe us. He clothe us with his garments. Because we ain't getting in there with our, with our own filthy rags. Our righteousness is filthy as who knows what. And by the way, y'all can interject at any time. Let's keep talking. <laughs> but um, this, this is what's going to happen. Then I like this, this part too. It says, take thy number, O Zion. And shut up those of thine that are clothed in white. Take your number. I just want to be in that number. I want to get my number, which has fulfilled the Torah of Yahuwah or the law of the Lord. So this, this is why I'm excited to see all my family together, gathered together on this day, on this holy convocation. So I'm going to skip a lot of these things. We were talking about the, um, last week we were talking about the day of Yah. We were talking about, um, 
basically the, the most high he's going to return on this day but let's let's look at this scripture right here so leviticus 23 chapter 1 verse 1 uh i'm sorry uh, what is this this verse 23 okay leviticus 23 verse 23 it says and yahuwah spake unto moses saying speak unto the children of israel saying in the seventh month in the first day of the month shall you have a sabbath so today is a sabbath or i should say tonight whenever we get to the time it's a sabbath so we we, we rest we don't do our own work we don't do our own labor we uh do what we normally do on the sabbath we keep it holy we remember it we observe it um not only is this a sabbath this is what's called a high sabbath so it's it's a, the sabbath is special all by itself but this is special 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 day it says it's a memorial of blowing of the trumpets so a memorial means we're supposed to be remembering something there's a we're supposed to be there's some event or something we're supposed to be remembering i want to ask anybody have any idea what it is we should be remembering I'm just throw it out there no wrong answers any idea of what we're speaking memory remember go ahead brought a bondage brought a bondage in egypt yep that's actually right mm -hmm. we're going to see that when i get to the scriptures that's right anybody else what, what is it uh, go ahead the feast of trumpets is starting in a few minutes what time like, uh, the first Oh, the first piece of trumpets? That's a good question. The first piece of trumpets, it could be either when Moses told the children of Israel to do it when they left Exodus, or you might be able to say that the first piece of trumpets was in heaven before Moses even spoke about it. So in that, t in that case, I don't know. <laughs> They've been doing it forever. Okay, maybe. Now, usually yeah. the word memorial was tied to something like a God. Yes. So what God ever yeah. tried That's good. I think I see your point. You're saying yeah. whatever was the first one, we should be remembering whatever happened to cause that event. That's good. Yes. But also, if something dies, that's you have a memorial. So, exactly. Anybody else? No wrong answers. It's not fun. I see you. Want, you want to say something? See. Yeah, I'm looking at you. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And something you've been dying, but you're remembering the contribution of that was not made to everyone else, everyone who was still around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So, those are all good answers. What we're going to do is we're going to look. Look at Numbers 10. I looked at Numbers 10 on Wednesday. We're going to look at it. But today what we're going to do is we're going to dissect this. And we're going to talk about it. So Numbers 10, Chapter 1. I'm sorry. Numbers 10, Verse 1. And Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, Make thee two trumpets of silver. Of a whole piece shalt thou make them, that thou mayest use them for the calling of the assembly and for the journeying of the camps. So, so Moses, he's telling, he's telling the people, I want you to make these two trumpets. And these aren't shofars, by the way. Sometimes you see trumpets so far. These are actual trumpets here may make out of one piece of silver i want you to make this trumpet these two trumpets and and this is the reason you're going to use them for calling the assembly to come together kind of like what we're doing right now we're coming together and for the journey of the camps so when the camps are getting ready to move 
That's what this is for. That's why this was supposed to be blown for these two trumpets. So, um, I started, I was looking at this picture and just imagining like if we were all there together, we got all the 12 tribes all around, centered around the tabernacle. We got the priests on the inside, we got the people on the outside and they're just in the wilderness and they, you know, I start asking myself this question, what, what's the benefit of this right here? Because this to me, this is a beautiful, a beautiful picture. What's the benefit of everybody being like this? What's the benefit of this? Like we got the most high, his presence in the middle, but then we got all the camps kind of off circle around it. Go ahead, Caleb. You know, I used to practice Islam mm -hmm. and I feel like they stole our practice mm -hmm. because before they had prayer, they have what you call calling the Adon. And a person yells out to wherever you are so that other people can come and pray with you. Mm -hmm. And that's why they always pray together inside their mosque, mm -hmm. you know, all in one accord at the same time. And also they have what you call a mez a mezuin, something I think it's crossed that way, where they actually kind of I don't know if it's a trumpet, but it's just a noise that makes like eh! and a guy singing over a microphone over the whole city to call the Adon to gather everybody. And I really feel like they stole this from us. Now that more and more I, I see this and study this. Mm -hmm. That's right, because they circle around that cube, that square cube. Right. And the tabernacle right. is just like that. It's like right, a cube. Right, right, right. Right. I really think they took this from us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, you might be right about that. Go ahead. I, I see this picture in the where the Yah showed me. You know, one on time when you see, you see like the surround animals, uh, like the outline and everything. I'm talking about like the tents and everything, like the house. Yes. So he was saying, when he was revealing to me, he's, he's saying about this power of the strong mm -hmm. it's, it's it's starting from within and spreading out yes instead of you know a lot of times we look at stuff like the boundaries and the outside mm -hmm. so you know, just showing me that because of its presence it starts to within and it actually spreads out and yes. that has a lot to do with the way that the whole thing comes in the whole yes. portion and the inner portion of the place and why the police are there and why everybody is in the position because Everything being planted because, like, everybody's being touched mm -hmm. in a different way, but it's coming to the end. From within, that's right. That's that's good. That's that's actually exactly what I was seeing when I was looking at this. It starts from within and goes out. So, the closer you are, the, the, the easier it's going to be for you to hear when that trumpet is going. The easier it's going to be when that Chicago glory comes. Those people that are right here, they're going to get <laughs> People all in the back, they're just going to be eating, you know, whatever. But these people right here, they're going to going on. The closer you are. And these priests that are right here, they're going to feel it before these people out here. But the people on the, in the holy place, in the holy place, they're going to feel it even more powerful. Priest, oh gosh, he needs a. The, the Ark of the Covenant and the Holies of Holies, he can't even hardly stand because because of the weight of the presence. This is so, this is too much. So it starts exactly how you say it. it starts right here inside of this, where you see the Ark, the place where you do hit go to do, where you meet with Yah, that they would do prayer at the veil, at the brick veil. They would have the the incense, it will go up. That's why David said, let my prayer rise to you as incense. They will have the incense 
uh, right in front of that veil going before the Holy of Holies. And then these, the, the high priest, he would begin to pray and he would lift up intercede for all of Israel. And as he's doing, doing that, the, in the Hebrew is saying that the most high, he would draw near. So they were drawing near to each other. That's really what real prayer is. It's not just talking, that's how you start, but it's drawing near. He draws near to you, you draw near to him, but it, it started right here and then just manifested more outwardly. So, yeah. yeah how, that's, how, how, much more, how much more blessed are we now? Because now we are the temple. That's it. So if that's it's starting it. from inside, it's starting from inside you. That's right. And so you have to take care of this temple just like they had to take care of that temple. That's right. They had to do all the different things he said to do to it. We got to do the same thing to our bodies and present it as a living sacrifice. So how much more blessed are we are now that we don't even have to go to a physical temple. All we got to do is gather together. So we got That's it easy. All we got to do is come together. That's right. That's right. That's you getting to the point. We already getting to the point. I don't even need to teach nothing else. That's why we that's why I study this because the more we study the tabernacle, the more we're going to be in the ourselves. Because he patterned the tabernacle after our bodies. He he's he knew he knows the end from the beginning. So he knew one day he was going to revive on us. So this is just a picture, a shadow of what was to come. So when you study this temple, it's powerful. I, I can cry over studying the temple when it used to seem boring. But you start studying this thing, you start asking the most high questions, then you start revealing things to you, and then it just swings over the But this is exactly that's that's the whole point how it's a privilege and an honor so we can, number one uh it's in the shape of the top or the top yes which is, which is yes which is very appropriate yes. um and then number two you know as as we as believers for the day those of us who press our way to the presence yes we live a different lifestyle than those who are saying Yes. And those who made that so that the more we press, the more we sacrifice, the more we dedicate our lives to knowing him more and more, I'll say the stranger who how we look to other people, even other believers who who take him for granted, who just the world have a back state of the brother. We probably know not physically work because we think the world anyway. Yeah. So to I would say for those who are more common than than others, um our lifestyles. That's right. It, it is two different standards because, because you know, we may have some experiences that some other people have never experienced. What I got right now, I don't lose. My relationship with the Most High, I wouldn't trade it for nothing. Just hearing him speak is enough to make me lose it. So that for people who don't who, who don't have that intimacy as a priest, they not they don't quite get it yet because they haven't obtained that that level of intimacy. But even what I got, I'm striving for more because I know I can get closer. I can get closer. Just like you have you, you have your Levites that I, I, I say it like this. You have the you have Israel, which is just a common everyday citizen who's supposed to be a holy, but then you have your Levite, 
I'm not even talking about the Levite, the son of Aaron, just the Levite who got to do temple duties around. They didn't get to go inside because they weren't the son of Aaron. But then you have the sons of Aaron who are the Kohanim, priests. They actually get to go inside and do uh, make offerings and sacrifices. And they have even more restrictions that they have where they can go and minister. But then you got after the the, the, the Levites who are the Kohanim, then you got the, the high priests. And each level, each each level up is more restrictions, but it's also a greater level of weight and glory that they can experience in the eye. It's like I don't want to settle for just being on the outside. But I do I just like Caleb was saying though, I'm thankful that he's on the inside of us. But even with him being on the inside of us, there's levels to this. There's levels. So and you I'm, know what, Mr. Bakar? Yes, sir. He's, he's he he. Can I say something real quick? He he he's <laughs> ordained us and have, have allowed us to all be high priests now. They wasn't all high priests back then, like you said. Some were way in the back and wouldn't feel that glory like that. We are all ordained if we choose to be to be high priests. We have that privilege now to be all be within the inner sanctuary within the most holy place. So that's even more beautiful. Hey, that's even more yeah. beautiful. We're all high priests. People will get that. If you choose to be, you can be a high yes. priest too. You, you, you're right. We can do, well, I'll put, Yahushua is the high priest right now, but, did we can go into the we can be right in front of the throne he's saying we seated in heavenly places we can actually get right in front of him and be ministered to we can talk to him we can commune with him spiritually by our spirits so yeah we got a benefit that they they never had we have an intimacy that they couldn't experience because he did the spirit did not yet reside and inside of them, it would come upon them. Yeah, they had they but, they they had to they they had to be a son of Aaron to be a high priest. We don't have to be yeah. that. Right, that's right. We're at we're uh, Yahusha is the priest. You know, right? So, by according to the law, most people would think, well, maybe he shouldn't be qualified to be priest. He's not after the Levitical priest. He's after the Melchizedek, the, the same one that Abraham paid the tithes to. Abraham paid the tithes. He was under the order of Melchizedek. It's greater than the Levites. It's before the Levites. It's a heavenly priesthood. So that's right. And that's what we are part of because we're in Yahushua. It's, it's deep. It's, it's really deep. Good point. Go ahead. And one thing you were saying is there's a difference between you putting yourself in position and him putting you in position. He says there's a difference. He says, even in this picture right here, he says that that when they surrender, then he's able to take position, mm. to put them in position. It's different if you put yourself in position, but if he puts you in position, Right, yeah. there's a surrender that takes place, yeah. and it kind of that one about the middle of it, about us being right with him and doing things that are wrong because then we surrender to him for him to put us in the position instead of us worrying about ourselves. That's and then it basically just frees us up, and then he lines everybody up the way they need to be in position for his will. Yeah. So I'm lining you up because you were allowing me to surrender. I'm lining you up so you can, you know. <laughs> I'm lying in you so, so you can be in, in, in the right place. Yes. So I can be so he's like, so I can be satisfied. Yes. Out of out of you being in position. Yes. So that's what you said. That's that's, that's a privilege. That's a privilege we have. That's a privilege. Yep. And an honor. Yes. We've been taking it for granted, actually. Right. We, we ain't gonna take it for granted no more. We're gonna no. He, so I got a question on here. What benefits are there being in the camp? What's what's some of the benefits? 
I just wanted to meditate on this for a while because as I was looking at this, I was like, I could, this, my mind started racing with thoughts. The benefits of being in the camp. Anybody, what's close, close to his presence? Close to his presence. But you can actually see because there's a, there's a smoke, there's a little smoke. Yes. Well, I, I'll say this. Like you was talking about taking the stuff for granted. We've taken for granted Yeshua's death that he that he freely gave of his innocent blood. And without that, we would be all penalized to death for our sin. Like I, I really feel like we as a people have taken that for granted, myself included. We've taken that for granted and we don't give it enough honor, enough credence. Because without that, without him freely giving of himself, without him coming off that throne and coming down to earth as a lowly man and freely giving of himself innocently and going down in the shoal and overcoming Satan and his minions and coming back to life and overcoming death with his life, we would all be damned. Mm -hmm. so that's, that, that's what I feel is the most important benefit. I don't know if you mean inside the camp itself, you know, or just in that area, but because of that, we are now able to be high priests. And to me, that's the greatest benefit. We are able to have redemption, whereas we would all be down, or we'd still be giving up sacrifices with animals. Because all gods require an animal, I mean, all gods require a blood sacrifice. Whether it's a human or whether it's from our our Yohevave animals. He never required us to give up human sacrifices. That's why he stopped, he stopped Isaac. But best believe the false gods, those people was giving up their own firstborn sons in Egypt. Yep. That's right. I want to add this that so the circumstances for this tabernacle is what is in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. There was no civilization. Yeah. Uh, unlike us, where you can control this these four prophets. Mm -hmm. All they have was Moses, but that's all they need. Because they actually, unlike us, you know, we rely on the prophets to hear from God. Yeah. And sometimes we need a confirmation because I may have not trust what you're saying. If this is not by myself, okay, God, I think I heard the good. Did you really say that? Because what I'm, what you what you're saying, what I think you're saying, what I'm looking at, what I'm feeling, what I'm hearing, don't really come aside. It's a thing that just happened to me. Listen to what you want, it's okay. Sim Joel and reaching it down. <laughs> what tell me what you're saying? Mm -hmm. But they actually had God's friends. Yes. Right in front of them. So when they said, Well, God, I have to ask. Hey, Papa God, you got something more? Because look at this. Okay, God, I actually look at it right now. Let's sit on the back of the tent and go because it's not how I'm about to have a problem. We don't go now. We're going to be down. We're going to be lost. We're not going to know where to go. GPS ain't going to work. You know, they stop going to exist yet. Yes. But, you know, so I would say, as opposed to, even though we have more prophets than they did, but they actually had God's presence. Yes. So as long as we were in the camp, we could literally see God. So. Yeah. Sorry, I was actually going to say something similar to that. It was like they had first hand experience. Like, yes. it's no way he said, she said that being in the camp, you're seeing yes. what's going on. You're feeling it, you're sensing it. Yeah. And whether being outside, you know, do you hear about what happened? I didn't even find out here. So, just being in the camp is just a, a first hand experience. Yes. Yeah. I that's that's all good. That, in some ways, it seems better now, but in some ways, that seems better. <laughs> if if you think about like this too, when they when they get to the point where they're going to travel to the mountain Mount Sinai, they actually get to hear him speak. Yeah, it ain't no longer Moses and other priests. It's they get to hear him. They're scared, but they get to Yeah, hear they were afraid. Right. I was about to say, yeah, but they but they were afraid. It was like they, trembling, like <laughs> yeah. They 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 tremble, 
But just still, if yeah. he had kept doing that, they said we don't want that no more. Just let just speak to us through Moses. That's mm-hmm. that was a mistake, I believe. That was a mistake because they could have had him just clear. No, no ambiguous. No, and it's not ambiguous. Like this is what I said. You heard the ground shake, so now you know what to do. But you know, our one last benefit what we're looking at. Yes. 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 So that's a good point. And also, too, you look at it like this, and this picture, if you're just looking at this picture, this is just uh, basically a hologram of mm-hmm. uh, what's actually happening in the realm of the biggest scene at that time. Yes. Also, yes. That's so just right. imagine how big that was. Yes. If that's just the hologram, if that's the manifestation that was already already placed in the realm of spirits. Yes. So there was a lot going on there, even though we see that. It was a bigger picture in, in, in the unseen. You, you got see, see Israel. They got angels like Michael that's working just on their behalf. <laughs> Michael strong enough to cast out Satan and all the other demons. You you read Jubilees and everything, reading about all the power that he had by himself, and that's the angel for Israel. So imagine what's going on in the heaven. Oh, they're having a good time. We got all Israel right here. You know, that's that's a good point. That's a good point. Man, that's a good conversation. Okay, I'm gonna ask one one more thing. What see, we talked about the benefits of being in the camp, but what are the benefits of being close to the center of the camp? So opposed to being this one out here, but you being in here. We kind of already discussed that. Maybe we don't, yeah, because we already kind of hinted on that. So I'll just keep moving on. Okay, now the, what I what I read was Moses said, "Make two trumpets of silver." Does anybody know what the uh, silver is symbolic of? Silver. Okay, if you don't know, I'm going to tell you. Silver is symbolic of redemption. The trumpet is being blown and it's silver. Think of redemption. And what's redemption? Buying you back. Buying you back. Which makes sense because there was two trumpets, one for each. Mm-hmm. Well, at that point, oh, there wasn't maybe prophetic. Yes. So, yes, redemption is buying back. Let's look at a few examples. So Genesis 37, 28, it says, then there passed by Midianites, merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. So how did they buy jo- Joseph? So, so they, from his, from, uh, I'm sorry, how, how did his brother sell him to the Ishmaelites? They got 20 pieces of silver for it. Zechariah 11, 12 to 13. This is a prophecy here. It says, and I said unto them, if you think good, give me my price. And if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price 30 pieces of silver. I wonder what this, I wonder what Zechariah, who he was talking about. And Yahuwah said unto me, cast it into the potter, a goodly price that I was prized at of them. And I took the 30 pieces of silver silver, and cast them to the potter in the house of Yahuwah. So this is clearly a prophecy about Yahushua. You even see the potter's field in the New Testament when uh, when uh, it's talking about Judas and the 30 pieces. But anyway, Matthew 27, 3, it says, Then Jesus, when he, Judas, when, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. So you see, silver is used to buy purchase and 
people. They were just purchased, Joseph was purchased to be a slave. And and then Yeshua, he's or Yahusha, he's he's purchased from the chief priests from uh Judas. He he basically just gave him up. So now he's a prisoner, he's in the hands of the chief priests. So now Leviticus 27, why 30 pieces of silver? Oh, I was just about to read that. I was just about to read that, Joel. I was gonna ask you of 27 yes. two through uh verse two through eight. I was just about I got it open in my face. <laughs> okay, hey. well, yes, we're on the same page. So Leviticus 27, it says, And Yahuwah spoken to Moses, speak unto the children of Israel, say unto them, When a man shall make a singular vow, the person shall be for Yahuwah by thy estimation. Now listen to this. The estimation shall be of the male from 20 years old, even unto 60. Even the estimation shall be 50 shekels of silver. What that means is if you're going to purchase a male between the ages of 20 and 60, got to be 50 pieces of silver. So young man, 50. After the, then it says, uh, after the shekel of the sanctuary, and if it be female, then thy estimation shall be 30 shekels. So a female is a 20 shekels less than a male. Why? I don't know. Possibly because a woman is going to do less work than a man. So maybe they think they're going to get more money out of the male. I'm not 100% sure. But you see, 50 for a man, 30 for a woman. Now. Let's go to Yahushua. Let's think about this first. Go ahead. Okay, so if it according to the Hebrew I'm going to check, corresponds with the Levi Mule, which is light. Yes. Woman and light. Yes. 30 is Lamed, that means rod of authority. Authority. Rod of authority, yes. Which explains why we usually talk about 30 means of silver. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. That's good. <laughs> So, so when you think Judas, he gets 30 pieces of silver. But 30 pieces of silver is for the woman. Why wasn't it? I don't know. But let's think about this for a second. Did Yahusha do anything wrong? No. He didn't do anything wrong. So we, when, I, when, I, when you look at this, one way of looking at this is the money wasn't for him. It was for us. It's wrong. 30 people were still. So I know that in, the, the people that were doing that didn't have that in their mind. But we, even though we, we're not redeemed by silver, money that is, that's not going to cut it. Only his blood is good enough to redeem us. But even according to the law, the bride is purchased. 30 pieces of silver. 30 pieces. So even according to the law, the Torah, I should say, the, the, the conditions were met so that wow. a good exchange could happen for his bride. He didn't, he didn't need that. I just saw that today. I just saw so silver trumpets redemption i'm just trying to show you the connect i just want y'all to see oh go ahead uh mother so what happens if you're over 60 years old okay let's i'm so glad that's that the next verse I'm 62. That's, the, that's the next verse that's the next verse it even I'm, talks about the little glory baby. <laughs> the yes. kids and the little babies further down. Yes. Let's let's read it real quick. So that's Leviticus 27, I think. Yeah, 27. So if you're it let's so we talked about 30 she shekels, but once we get to verse five, it says, and if it be from five years old even to twenty years, so these are little the children, then the estimation shall be for the male twenty shekels and the female ten shekels. And if it be from a month old, even the real baby babies, month to five years old, then the estimation shall be five shekels for a male of silver, and for the female, it should be three shekels. 
And if it be from 60 and above, if mm-hmm. it be male, it shall be 15. And for the female, 10. Okay. So there we go. Uh, <laughs> let, let me show one more, too. It says, but if he be poorer than thy estimation, so as a poor person, he present himself before the priest, and the priest shall value him. So if he's a poor one, the priest would determine what's the value. So, so good questions, but still, it's redemption. So, these, so when you see these trumpet names long, it's like redemption. We're just going to, it's just 10 verses. We're going to be much longer because we want to blow these trumpets because it's almost time. Verse 3, it says, and when they shall, actually it is time, it's already dark. <laughs> I think, you know what I was thinking? I was Because normally we got people from Seattle that join them. I was trying to wait until it was people trying to for all of us. So that's what I was thinking. So, but let's keep going. First, they shall blow. Blow with them. All the assemblies shall assemble themselves to the. At the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay. You can you can do it next time. So so when he would do that, the priest they would assemble at the door. So they would come right here to this door and at, at the, of the congregation. And if they blow but with one trumpet, the princes, which are basically like the rulers, that's what princes mean, which are heads of the thousands of Israel, shall gather themselves unto thee. No, I had a revelation today about this. You blow it, you blow it one time like that, the, the trumpet one time. First, the leaders... They go. So this the, the first the first instruction is for the leaders. Sometimes the trumpet is long. It's just to get the leaders on the same page, to get them to have the right instruction because they have the responsibility for all of Israel. Now I got some witnesses because y'all may remember when we were at the river and I told you I was hearing trumpets. Remember I was saying for two for two weeks straight, and then Risha did too. Then then Risha heard it after. After that, so it's scary. They did, and so I'm hearing these trumpets, and what that led to was me being people talking about me at the river. I find out later because I, because after after I got those trumpets start happening, I started learning about the sound. I started learning about this. I started learning about the two states. It started it just all started happening. It was so much, so I start telling people. And people are talking about me. And I, I just found this out recently. Because they're like, you know, when we left the river, I'm like, really? They said that. Like, <laughs> like I, I was thinking, the leaders got to hear first. That trumpet got to go to them. The people that Yah has as prophets or priests or teachers, yeah. or evangelists, oh, they got to Oh, yeah, it's started. Yom Teruah at the day of shouting. Okay. Yeah. So they got to get first, and then everybody else can go. So sometimes you just gonna have the trumpet blown one time, and it's for the leaders. So the, the leaders got to go first. They're gonna be judged first too. Then it says, and if they blow, but with one trumpet, the prince. Oh, I just read that. Let's go to the next one. And it says, and when you blow an alarm, alarm is tovua. So we're celebrating Yom Teruah, a feast of trumpets. Now, I didn't say Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> Rosh Hashanah is not in the Bible. It means head of the year, but the head of the year is in Abi or Nisan. This is not the head of the year. This is not Rosh Hashanah. This is Yom Teruah, feast of trumpets. So when you blow an alarm, Teruah, then the camps that lie on the east parts shall go forward. Who was on the east parts? Who? Okay, yeah, it's the right, but who was on the east? Who goes first? Judah. Okay, there you go. Judah. That's right. So Judah was Great. part of the east, also Issachar, 
and uh, from getting the car. I forgot the third one. Yes. Benjamin. Okay. So, so Judah, Issachar, and Benjamin. The first blow, that's for them. That means that they're going to, to leave or go, journey, journey. Then the next one, it says, and when you blow an alarm the second time, then the camps that lie on the south, they're going to go and they're going to take their journey. They shall blow an alarm for their journeys. So this blowing of the trumpets today, this is about a journey we're about to take. Mm. This is a journey. Mm. So anybody know what journey we should be getting ready for? The second exodus. The second exodus. Oh, yeah. This is not just to be played with instead. This is not to be played with. One day, there's a bunch of these events that are going to happen. One day we're going to be practicing. We're going to be rehearsing. We're going to be blowing this trumpet. We're going to be praising, worshiping, lifting up our voice. And these events, talking about like the second exodus right here, it's going to happen. One day we're going to blow the trumpet and we're going to be gathered together. We're not going to call it a rapture. We're going to call it a We're going to be gathered together in Mount Zion. In, let me go to that scripture real quick. I read that on Wednesday, but it just touched me when I read it because it felt good. Okay, so Joel 2, let's, let's read it. I'm sorry. That's right. Get excited. See, we, we're just practicing. We're just practicing blowing this trumpet. So look at this, Joel 2, 1. I didn't notice this until this week when I read it for the first time. Joel chapter 2, verse 1. I'm not going to be much longer. Look at what it says. Blow ye. Oh, I'll wait for y'all to get there. Okay. Yes. Joel 2, verse, verse 1. It says, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm, a teruah, and my holy mountain. Blow the shofar in Zion, Zion. And sound a teruah in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of Yah cometh. It is nigh; it is at hand. So, in Zion, we this we are actually this scripture is talking about a time when we're actually going to be in Mount Zion, and we're going to be blowing the trumpet. He's going to gather us. We're going to go to the land. We're going to be in Mount Zion. We're going to be safe and we're going to be protected. And when we're there, though, he's going to say, blow the trumpet. And we're going to be blowing the trumpet. And then I'm not going to read all of this because we already tore this. We, we, we went through all of this. But I want you to look at the end. Let's look at the last verse. All of this is talking about the day of Yah. It's talking about all the crazy things that are going to happen. The army, Yah's army that's going to come. And Yah's army is like no other army. Yah's army is giant people that have never existed on the earth and never will exist ever again on the earth are going to come. It says they're going to leap on mountains. It says they're going to sneak into the houses like a thief. It says that nobody is going to be able to stop them. If you have a weapon and you try to attack them, it won't hurt them. It's going to be like nothing happened to them. That's what this chapter is talking about. But then when you get to the end, it says he's going to pour out his spirit on the flesh and sons and daughters and on prophesy. He says he's going to show that the sun's going to turn dark. The moon's going to turn into blood before the day of the eyes. So that's our sign. That's when we know it's about to happen. I mean, it, it might be seconds or it might be minutes or days. But what we do know is whatever problems we got with people, it needs to be forgiven like that. It needs to be dropped. If any, any issue you got with anybody, is over because he's about to come he's about to return so that's what it's talking about when it says the sun is going to be turning the darkness and the moon and the blood but this is what i want to get to verse 32 it shall come to pass whoever shall call on the name of yahuwah or yah shall be saved or delivered he's talking about this time day of yah yom Tuhua. on this when this happens those that call on his name they know his name yah they're going to be delivered 
for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. It's going to be deliverance in Zion. So when we caught up, we meet him in the air. It's in the clouds. We're high up in the air because we're high up in the mountain, in Mount Zion, in Jerusalem. That's where deliverance is going to be. That's where safety is going to be. So it's going to be deliverance. And it says, as Yahuwah have said, and the remnant whom Yahuwah shall call. Go ahead, uh, Caleb. I feel as though the ceiling that he's talking about, those that are sealed, Yes, to me, that's that's the same thing as when they were to put blood on their doorposts. Yes, and to be over, and the angel of death was was to go past that household. Yes. To me, that's the same thing that the ceiling of us. That's going. That's our ceiling, and that blood on the doorpost was Yeshua's blood, yes. and his aren't his the, his angels that he's sending his army. It's going to pass our pass our household. That's right. That that's that tied, that that's that's to me the same thing. It and is. it always go. It always goes back when you read the in the Pentateuch. He's always referring to do this for I brought you out of the land of Egypt. Do mm -hmm. this because I brought you out of the land of Egypt. Yes. Exactly. So we look at Passover and unleavened bread, and we look at those as being appointed times where he brings out the children of Israel out of Egypt. We know, of course, Passover. These feast days are about the same thing, only it's the second Exodus. This feast of trumpet, the trumpet's going to be blown. That's all. That's that's the, it's the second Exodus. That's all it is. It's the same exact thing. You see the same exact patterns, just like Feast of Tabernacles. What? That's the, the day we se celebrate where Israel dwells in booths. We create booths, we create tents, tabernacles, just like they did in the wilderness, because it's going to happen a second time. We're going to be in the wilderness, and we're going to have to travel. That's why people go out in the woods and stuff, and tabernacles, and build, and build their own. When we had our house, we would build, uh, uh, we'd build one in our backyard every Feast of Tabernacles, just to just practicing and i was terrible at it because by the third day mom would always be on the ground and i just spent all this money on stuff but hey i'm practicing so let's read this this is about the second exodus ezekiel 20 33 it says to 35 as surely i live declares the sovereign yahuwah with a powerful hand and an outstretched arm and with an outpouring of rage i will be king over you yeah, it's a beginning over you. I will bring you out from the nations and will gather you from the lands where you are scattered with a powerful hand and an outstretched arm and with an outpouring of rage, indignation, wrath. That's how we're coming out in wrath. So we we can expect it to not be pretty outside when this happens. I Go ahead. That, uh, the gentleman just mentioned the, the first Exodus or the Passover. Uh, they mentioned the angel of death. Actually, y'all yeah, himself. Yeah, but so many people, I mean, you know, you learn that I always thought, well, I actually read it, said that myself, that he was y'all that was there. Wasn't the angel of death in his town? He did. He went there. He went to the town. And that, that, that brings up a good point because. We think about this. Many people don't know this. Israelites died. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yep. Israelites died. It wasn't just the Egyptians. It was whoever did not obey the instructions. If you did not put door the blood on the doorpost, you died. And the people that were with them, the sojourners, they died like a few days later mm -hmm. from being disobedient. So they didn't even make it to the land. Yeah. So they were there for So the the thought I had today was. You go back to Noah, and Yah floods the earth. How many people survive? Say that again. The flood, Noah. Eight. How many survive? Eight. Eight. Yah destroyed everybody. Whoever was in the world, except for one dude and his family, they probably only got saved because of him. 
everybody else die. Then you think about the Exodus. How many of them made it? Only the people 20 and under them. And Joshua and Caleb. Yep. That's it. He took out the He let the whole voice. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 those that are eating eating flesh and and rats and and they think that they're, they're doing it secretly they they're going to get judged yep they're going they're going to die so so this is serious but when i think about you are really willing to let everyone die <laughs> he really said only a remnant is going to be saved. Only a remnant. You know, what's, what's that scripture? Uh, broad is the way. Narrow is the, is the uh, way. A few there are that find it. I don't forget how exactly it goes. Yeah. Broad is the way of destruction. There's many on that path. And narrow is the way to life. It's, it's only going to be a few. So, when, when, in fact, when we when we look at that scripture, it says, "And those that are alive and remain shall be caught up." The reason is those that are alive and remain, because ain't gonna be like many left. And re, the, when you look at the word "remain," it's the same word for remnant. When you look up "remnant," remnant means those that survive, and it says from a disaster, such as a natural disaster or from some calamity that has occurred. So when he says those that are alive and remain, it means some devastation happened, some people were killed, a whole bunch of things were happening. You got a few people left. So those that are alive, all the dead people, the righteous dead people, all the people that are left, they're going to go and they're going to be in Jerusalem, Mount Zion. So this is this is all part of this day. This is the Feast of Trumpets. It's like the start. And it may get fulfilled multiple times. I don't know how it's going to work out. But I know the blowing of the trumpets. Uh, one other example I thought of, I'm not going to go to it because you already know, but the 10 virgins. When we think about the 10 virgins, let me just go to it. Do y'all mind? Okay. If y'all don't mind, let's go to it. Matthew 20, 20, 25, I think. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. He can't kill the creation. Didn't he have that Yes. Do whatever. He's killing you. If you make if I made the same that's not true. He said, "Can the clay say to the potter?" <laughs> I brought you before. Real, real quick. <laughs> okay. Um, verse one. Verse one. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened to the ten virgins. They took their lamps, went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise, five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. For the foolish, they had lamps in the lamps, but they didn't take any extra oil. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered. See, this is kind of what he's doing now. He's tearing. He could have came three years ago. He says, Terry means that he is like waiting. He's like taking extra time. He's not doing it immediately. Yeah, he, he's he's tearing right now because the 400 years is over. So if the 400 years is over, then he could come whenever. Exactly. I'm glad he didn't come. Because there's some people, even today, I was talking to some friends from college. I was talking to one of my friends, and I'm letting her know who we are as a people. And she's like, oh, 
competence in my class. We, 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 my, uh, we still waking up a lot of people. She's, you know, a lot of religious, really religious people, and a lot of people that are different skin. So he's given us time. But this is what's happening here. While the bridegroom tarried and they all slumbered and slept, all of us slumbered and slept. The wise ones and the foolish. We all have gone to sleep at some point. So, and at midnight, there was a cry made. A cry. That's like a shout. Exactly. A teruwa. A blowing. Something like that. It's time. It's time. He's here. You know, something like that. It's, it's time. Why did I say cool, cool? I wasn't trying to say that. <laughs> That's from the old days. That's from back in the hood. I had not done that in a long time. <laughs> when we were about to play basketball, we used to do that. So anyway, it says, and that so there's a cry made at midnight. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamp. And the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil for our lamps are gone out right now the foolish they don't have much time left they better go buy oil right now buy oil right now the wise answer i like the scripture you gave sent not too long ago too about the wisdom of those who obey the torah or something like that you sent me that was a great, great scripture you you gave this is wisdom. This is your wisdom. Something like that. This is your wisdom when you're obeying his instructions. So that's what the foolish need to do and the wise need to make sure they hold on. They need to keep being obedient. It's one thing to have the testimony of Yahushua. We believe him. We serve him. But then we also need to keep his commandments. Okay, next one it says, but the wise answered saying, not so. Let their lest there be not enough for us and you, but go rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I know you not. This scripture we've been taught is talking about heaven. It's not talking about heaven. This is when the wise virgins are taken. And they're get they're taken into the marriage supper. They're taken into Mount Zion, into Jerusalem. But then there are those that are left outside. They were foolish, and because they were foolish, they have to endure all the plagues that are coming on the earth. Because they chose not to come out of the platform, now they're receiving the plagues. Now they're going to have to endure. They're going to have to give up their life in order to make it. This is the they're they're virgins. They, they're virgins. They, they serve the Most High, but they're foolish. And so now they're going to have their testing outside. They're not the Church of Philadelphia, who he says he promises he's going to keep from the hour of temptation. So this these are this is what's happening. Oh, you guys, they, they're gone. Let's let's go see. We know where they are. Let's go see if we can get there. Nope. The door is shut. So watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour when we're in the Son of Man coming. The Son of Man is coming from Yom Teruah. We don't know the day and the hour, but we do know the season. We do know the appointed time. At the last trump, the last trump has been blown. That's Yom Teruah. So I don't know what Yom Teruah, and I don't know what time. I don't know what day. I don't know what hour. But I know the season. I went through all the scriptures on Wednesday going through that. The second Exodus will refer to one of the past and then he will follow you back around this time. I think it's going to, I think it may happen on the Passover because of the Septuagint also says that too, Passover. Yeah, that would be my guess. But but I'm also looking at this holiday too, um, because this is kind of like, it, I'm seeing the same repetitive things. Because uh, remember, when the trumpet is blowing, it's time for the camps to move. 
So, uh, no. So, uh, one thing to kind of the I was about to put that in here oh, no. just for time. I didn't. That's yeah, it goes right along with this. We gotta be faithful stewards. That's good. Go ahead, Caleb. Um, I have a question. So during Passover, is there in the scripture anything that says about like it says at the end of this verse? They shall be to you for an ordinance forever throughout your generations, as, as far as talking about when his return is, because I kind of because if it if it doesn't, I kind of feel like as you were saying, it will be on our Yom Teruah, because he's saying you need to keep doing this perpetually throughout your generation. So that way you you're grandsons or your great grandsons or whoever will always be ready so yeah. do you know do you know if for passover is it saying to do ordinances forever throughout your generations or is it i know it's a few of them but i'm not sure which ones it is yes for passover it says the same thing okay it, said, it says do this forever throughout your generations that's another thing since we don't know we should just be keeping all of his feast days anyway if we keep all of his days anyway, if we do all the Shabbats, uh, we, we're not going to miss. We're not going to miss. Uh, you know, I, I, and I'm, I'm not going to say that somebody that's not doing this is maybe the Holy Spirit will come get them to send an angel. I have no idea, but I'm not going to say that. <laughs> so, so almost only got like three, four more verses and then we're done. Then we could blow the trumpet and then we're gonna get something to eat. I'm hungry. So I'm sorry too. I didn't bring food and I didn't even think about it until right before he asked me if I had it. I was like, oh man. Because I usually on feast days, my like my wife will tell you, I always have lots of food. I feed everybody, I pay for it myself. But I just slipped my mind today. So I'm sorry. Next that won't happen again. <laughs> oh, okay. See, I'm gonna I'm not gonna let you give me in the flesh. Verse seven. But when the congregation is to be gathered together, ye shall blow, but ye shall not sound an alarm. And the sons of Aaron the priest shall blow with the trumpets, and they shall be to you for an ordinance forever. After generations. See, this is forever. We need to know what types of blowing. And that's why I'm gonna have David demonstrate when we're done with the scripture as we're ending the different types of blowing, because it's different. Ways you blow the trumpet is different. He can move words, so we even talk that. So the the uh, so this is forever. We we I uh, just to recap. We went through different ways the trumpets are blown. We we see that they're for the calling of the assembly, and for to come together like we're doing now, and for the journey. So we know when we hear that it's time to move. We might literally hear that, like from the sky. I'm, I'm fucking sure because I remember when I was hearing it, how they just did, you know, the, that experience. It may be like that again. Maybe something else, or maybe you won't hear it. Maybe it's just the angels going up. We just need to be spiritually in I have no idea, but we want to know the different cause. So let me go back. I think I have two more verses. Last two verses, and if you go to war, this is the last one because we're going to go to war. Again. Israel is going to go to war again. There's going to be the men of Israel are going to fight even when we get back into the land because the nations are going to come against what it says. So that's why this is forever. This is forever. 
these uh because we're gonna be doing this we ain't we haven't been doing it but we will be so that's why we want to learn about it now so and if you go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresses you then you shall blow an alarm with the trumpets Teruah. do a Teruah. do you remember Teruah? you remember Teruah? what is it Yeah, but how do you blow the shofar? What's Teruah? Yeah, how many times do you blow it? Not one. The third one that you were. You don't remember how many times you blow it for Teruah? Nine. Benji said it. Good job, Benji. So Tarua, that's a, that's good uh, job, Benji. Good job, Benji. That's nine times. So alarm, the alarm. Show them how you do Tarua. Look at Benji. Look at Benji. Benji gonna help you. Just look at him. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. No. So, so Tarua is supposed to be a little faster, but something like that. Nine times. That's letting you know it's an alarm. Trying to go to war. Okay, you know. To, so the pants got to get ready for me to hear that sound. So it says also in the day of your gladness and in your solemn days. Oh, I'm sorry, I skipped this. It says, I have to read this again. This is, this is the most important. If you go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresses you, then shall blow an alarm with the trumpets. Think about Jericho, too. They went around the wall, wall seven times, and that last time they started blowing that shofar, and the walls came down. So what is that? Shofar, yes. It says, when you do this, when you blow the alarm, the Teruah, ye shall be remembered before Yah, your Elohim, and ye shall be saved from your enemies. And when you blow that trumpet, when you sound that alarm, whether it's through the trumpet or it's with your voice, what happens? You're sounding an alarm. When you do that, he's going to remember, remember you, save you from your enemies. That's part of our praise. That's part of our praise too. Sometimes we get excited and we yell and we scream. That's because that's who we are. That's part of what we that's in, that's what we're supposed to do. That's what gets his attention. Not only are we remembering this, it's a memorial for us, but it's a memorial for him too. When we are doing the Teruah. Also in the day of your gladness and in your solemn days, in the beginnings of your month. <laughs> Month. It's the first day of the seventh month. So this is the beginning of the month. We're still doing it for that reason. Actually, every new month of the Hebrew time is for, for, for the trumpet. And you shall blow with the trumpets over your burnt offerings and with your sacrifices, your peace offerings, that they may be to you for a memorial before your Elohim. I am your ruler, your Elohim. So I think that's good. Now what we're gonna do is be real quick. We're gonna, I'm gonna sh we're gonna show you different types of ways you blow. It's we're gonna do four different types of ways you blow the show far, and then we'll be done. We're gonna be do done. So here are four different ways, or it's really three different ways, but this last one is a. Uh, we're gonna call it the last trump. One day it's gonna be the last trump. So uh Benji, you wanna do it once? Or you want David to do it? Okay, you do. So hold on one second. I wanna put you on here. Hold on. So David is gonna blow, he's gonna do the takia. The takia is one long, one long straight blast. Go ahead. 
Put your mouth together. Squeeze it. Try Can you again. put them on the screen? Nice. Praise him, baby. Praise yeah. him. We we can't see him though. Yeah, can you put him on the screen, Joel? Please, so we can see him. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let me uh let me do it. Hold on. Praise him, sweetheart. Praise him. Can you see him now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, oh, hold on. Let me uh, put this back up here. So now he's going to do the Chevarin. Three short blasts. Good job. Good job, nephew. One more, one more. Do you need me to do it or you got it? Now we're going to do Tarua again. Nine short blasts. Nine. Go ahead. Good job, David. Good job. Good job. Okay. Yeah. This last one, we're gonna, we're gonna all do good job. This, this last one is the is a uh, the last trump. This is going to be a tequila, which is like one long straight blast, but we just keep going until we're ready to stop. This is long, long blast. So we need to be loud and we need to be strong. And, 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 and for those of you that are online. I don't care if you're in the grocery store. I don't care. People, people, people need, people need to know that you're a little crazy every now and then. So they, they need to know that you got that in them just in case. So, so uh, we're going to, we're going to do this one time. So, so after I say Takia, we're going to make a loud noise. Okay. One, two, three. Takia. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Glory. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 David. Yes. All right. He didn't tell you to praise the Lord, dog. Amen. Okay. Everybody, that's that's our this this is our piece of trumpets. It was a nice little start to our trumpets. This is a Shabbat. So we're going to Shabbat and enjoy the rest of our day. Uh, I'm going. I'm going to end in prayer. And I, I'll go ahead. So, um, as uh, even before I end today, and I'm not sure for all of us who can do it, but uh, um, he told me to um, tell Joe that Storm would get started and that, and when he showed me that she's looking like dirt, and we, and that's in a good way. Calling you sold. Mm -hmm. And so by doing this on today, um, it's, it's also it's good for pray for people and you know, all that kind of stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But he told he told me for anyone that can, he said, sow the seed into you on today. Mm -hmm. So whoever can do what you which you can do, but he told me a certain amount, and so he told me fifty dollars. So um that's what he told me to do. If you guys can do that, I would say do it. If you can't, you can do whatever God has called you. So we want to plant it into, into, you know, into good ground. Amen. Especially on this blessed one. Amen. I appreciate so it. Went, so it's went to the ministry. Bread is on ministry. I appreciate that. That's also.
appreciate that. What happened? I don't see anybody. Well, give me one second. Let me try. I can't see you anymore. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, so that, yeah, that, that's Joel, what I was trying to get. Yeah. I, Joel, I give it to Donald to give to you, okay? Okay, that that's fine. I I, I have I have my okay. cash uh, too. Uh, but yes, you can give it to oh, him. Oh oh uh, oh wait. What? So I know how to do that. Okay. I, um, I forgot my. Do you got that. Zell? Do you got Zell? I do. I do. Okay. Okay. Give me uh, your Zell. Give me your Zell. Okay. okay. I know how to do that. Okay. All right. I'll put my number in here. But the reason I was saying that, that I know that was the Holy Spirit that told you that because one of my, I forgot to do it. And I, and I told myself I wasn't going to forget. When you come before Yahuwah, especially one of these appointed times, you're not supposed to come before him empty. So, I was going to tell people, I don't care who you give to, as long as it's a priest in Israel, you need to, you do, you should give an offering on, on these days. Um, I haven't always done that myself, but it came to my mind right before this. Like, if you have something, you give an offering. That's, that's, you don't come for the king and the king. You can do that. So I appreciate that though. So I that's my uh, phone number for Zell, and then my cash app is O T R S J J. I think. Let me make sure that's right. It is. But I'll I'll lead us off in prayer. I don't I don't uh, unless y'all have more y'all want to discuss. Uh, uh, let me fix this real quick. There we go. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you. We give you glory and honor. We thank you for this Yom Teruah, Feast of Trumpets. Thank you for revealing to us um, about you and about your appointed times, about these holy days. We know you are soon to come. And we ask, Father, that you prepare us. You said in Revelations, we count uh, to, to pray that we be be worthy to escape. Pray that we be found worthy to escape the things that are coming on this earth. So this is what we're praying. We, we pray, Father, that we be found worthy. Father, I pray that you purge us right now. I pray that any discipline that we need, discipline us right now. Get us right before you. We want to be right. We want our husbands, we want our wives, we want our children to be right as well. Please discipline us right now so that when you come, we will be one of those wise versions. We will be one of those that are unspotted from the world. We will be one of those that are sealed because not only are we being obedient to your word, but we're also keeping your feast. We're also being obedient by your spirit. Father, we want to we want to be where you are. We want to be where you are. We, we don't want anything of this world anymore. So cleanse us, purify us, wash us, even if it hurts us. That's what we want because we want to be with you. I thank you, Father, for our family online. I thank you for our family that's here in the room. I pray that you bless the remainder of our week. I pray that you continue to speak to us, continue to let us know what it is that we need to be doing to be pre preparing for your coming. We thank you also for providing. We thank you for those that are giving. We thank you for providing abundantly and meeting all of our needs. Father, we praise you in Yahushua's name. Amen. 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 Thank you, everybody, Amen. for uh, joining. I love y'all. And thank you, Toya. I didn't get to say anything to you, but thanks for joining. Um, and I will uh, see y'all later. All right. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.